Thank you all for being here for my academy talk and I'm going to talk about KRUNA, past, present and future and that includes topics like porting, new features since I started contributing and also plug-in distribution. So how does KRUNA affect you? Because most people only know it as the standalone executable that is launched when pressing alt space or alt and function 2 key. But it is also a flexible framework and it powers your normal application launchers like Kicker. And because of that, it is an essential part of the KDE desktop experience. And now I'll come to my structure. First, I'm going to tell you who I am and how I ended up in KDE. And then we are going to have a brief, brief look at the KDE four times. And we'll look at the major improvements and features since I started contributing. Um, but since I'm in the community for three years, um, I can't cover all features, so it's only an optimized subset of it. <laughs> and then we'll look at KRUNA's ecosystem and specifically the plugins. And afterward, we'll look at the upcoming changes and improvements in KDE Framework 6 and also um, look at some of the things that are not yet implemented but planned or in progress. So who am I and how did I end up in KDE? I first tried KDE in 2019 and I immediately loved it. And I initially played a lot around with the applets. So it was very fun, like installing some new applets through uh, KNU stuff. But it was mostly just playing around. But I only later discovered KRUNNER and all its features. And at the time, the normal application launcher did not have all of the plugins available um, that KRUNNER has. And I then played around with some of the KDE plugins and installed some other ones from GitHub. And eventually I wrote my own um, plugins, if you want to call them, using KRUNNER Bridge, which in and itself is another plugin. Um, but there I hit some architectural constraints and performance issues because it was starting like a new process, usually a Python process for every character typed. And that of course can't be very fast. <laughs> and then I decided to rewrite my plugins in C++, which is what some KDE for tutorial also suggested uh, when you want to create a KRUNNER plugin. But I barely knew it at the time, so it was quite adventurous. <laughs> And most of the plugins are still around on GitHub. For example, here you have an overview of my pinned GitHub projects. And you can see the JetBrains Runner plugin, which allows you to integrate the recently launched projects in the JetBrains IDEs in Kerana. And I also made a Dolphin counterpart for it. And I had created um, a plugin for like searching and copying and pasting emojis. And there's also an integration into KWallet, um, though that's maybe not super useful for most people, but at the time I uh, found it useful to have. And when talking about uh, how one started contributing to KDE, everyone has like an origin story. It was a feature they dearly wanted or a bug that was annoying them. And in my case, I had some runners that required configuration and they weren't very useful uh, without having some settings configured there. And ideally, I wanted to do that right after the installation. So I had the simple idea of um, passing in an argument when launching the Plasma Search KCM and um, that would then launch the runners config module. And that was my first fabricator patch. And I'm still here three years later and contributing to KDE has proven to be quite addictive. <laughs> and looking back at the KDE four times, I have a screenshot um, and you can see there's of course some resemblance um, like the, yeah, like the normal apps like console that are provided in the results. Conqueror is not as in as it was back then and um, there are, of course, some differences. For example, in uh, KDE 4, we had a key widget based user interface, and KRUNNER had some API to directly um, integrate into that, and that was called run options, where each runner could produce a custom widget for a given match, 
and the API was still around in the KDE five times, even though it didn't work. And um, I also stumbled upon that when I started creating my first runner. And also there was a help button, and that is one of the features I am going to talk about in a moment, because I revived that for uh, KDE five. And back then we also had scripting support using Cross, which was or is a KDE framework that allowed you um, to create scripts in Python, Ruby, and JavaScript. And so uh, you could create k runner plugins in all of those languages, and Cross would take care of making them work. And one feature that I mentioned a moment ago was the help integration. And in KDE4, this um, button was coded as part of the UI, so it was only specific to the Karana executable. Um, but the runner syntax class, which is used by the plugins to provide information, like what are the example queries and how is the description, um, was still in KDE Frameworks 5, and the plugins still used it, and some third parties even adopted that. Maybe they just copied it from existing KDE code. Um, but I wanted more flexibility by implementing is it as a plugin. And I did a little magic trick there. And because I've cast the parent to a runner manager object, which is always guaranteed to be true, so that I can access the other runners and their syntaxes. And here you have a screenshot of the help plugin in action. And on the top left corner, you can see that when just typing question mark or pressing the button, um, with the question mark in it, you'll get an overview of the available runners and their first example query. For example, we have the spell runner here, the places runner. Um, but some runners have more syntaxes. Um, and because of that, you can select one of the matches and you'll get then all available syntaxes. And that is what you can see on the top right corner. And the daytime runner, for example, has um, certain trigger words like date and time and can optionally have a query after that. And here you can see that it is put in angle brackets. And when you then run one of those matches, um, the text that is in angle brackets will be selected and the other text will just be inserted into the UI um, so that you can easily try out those example queries and you still know what you are supposed to type in the placeholder and you can override it with just one keystroke because the text is selected. And since it's a plugin, it is also available in kickoff. And here you have an overview of how that would look. And with the scrollable view, that is also quite nice because you get all the runners. And in Academy 21, there was a really cool uh, Reddit post um, highlighting some of Krunner's features. And hopefully, you'll be able to discover those features them yourself. And if anyone ever needs to do a similar post, it will hopefully take them less time. Also, k supports multi-line text, and this is used in the dictionary runner and also the help runner. And while the description is multi-line, it can also contain a um, cute style text markup, and that is used for organizing and highlighting information. And it can be activated using a simple setter and here in the screenshot, you can see that the example queries like screen brightness with the placeholder and the dim screen, screen um, example query are both um, displayed in bold and the description comes after that so that you can visually separate the example queries from their description. Also testing is quite important and, and that perfectly aligns with the KDE goal that um, was presented already. And KRunner has gotten a lot more test coverage in the framework and also the individual plugins. And um, before I made um, an improvement to that, it was quite hard to write tests that actually used the plugin because you either had to load the plugin manually from the build directory because we usually want to um, be able to run tests uninstalled, or you had um, to build the runner class in a static library, but that is, of course, a bit tedious and causes annoying CMake code. 
but luckily we have the Kerana configure test CMake function to the rescue. And that um, takes, or that works for both Dbus and C++ runners. And we'll talk about Dbus runners in a moment, but um, the concept of them is that they are just a separate process and Kerana can query them using Dbus and a specified API. And to use this plug or this CMake function for Dbus runners, we first have to pass in our test target and then our um, executable target for the Dbus runners and also the desktop file name and the desktop file path because for Dbus runners, the metadata is not embedded. And for normal C++ plugins, we don't need to pass in the desktop file because the metadata is embedded. And this CMake function is accompanied by the abstract runner test header, and that contains some utility methods, for example, init properties, which checks that the uh, runner plugin can be loaded and then loads it into the runner manager. And for Dbus runners, you can also start the Dbus runner or a Dbus runner process for it, and it also makes sure that the process starts properly and the Dbus service is registered. And since you can start processes, you of course also want to stop them. For example, if your test ends or if you want to have a clean state uh, during your test execution. But the method you will be probably using most of the time is launch query, which just takes the given query and tells the runner manager to launch it. But then it waits uh, with a given timeout for the runner manager to finish. And while making uh, the slides, I thought it might be useful um, if this method, method um, actually returned the matches of the runner manager. So I patched that a few days ago, and that should make your testing code even simpler. What is also, uh, what was also annoying quite a lot of users was the uh, duplication in the k runner results because, for example, the recent documents in the LuRunner often produced matches for the exact same file because one remembers your recent files and the other one your indexed files. And if you have the same, or if you have an indexed file recently opened, it is logical that both of them will show up. And also the shell runner, which executes shell commands, and the application runner um, often produced results for the exact same thing, like I type Firefox and the um, application's desktop file would only execute the given command, but the shell runner would suggest uh, running or uh, would suggest it as a separate match. But now we have deduplication based on the query match ID, and that needs to be explicitly enabled in the metadata, um, because not all plugins properly set an ID for their matches, but all of that is documented on develop.ke.org. And for most runners, it is, or for most runners in KDE, it is already implemented, um, but there are like some remaining or some smaller issues. And now I'm going to talk about KRunners ecosystem, and we had the KDE goal all about the apps. Um, and because of that, I thought all about the plugins would be a suitable headline for KRunner, because KRunner is entirely based on plugins. And Remember that I said in the KDE four times there was scripting support using cross, but all of that was removed in the KF5 transition and all scripted runners became unsupported as a result. But with Dbus runners, we luckily have once again a thriving ecosystem and because it's really easy to create such a runner in, for example, Python, and there's an official template for that in the Kerana repository. And since the Dbus runner API was initially created by David Edmondson, there were uh, some improvements done. For example, um, they now have lifecycle methods like teardown um, that allow you to clean up any data or invalidate a cache when the match session finishes and KRunner is closed. There are also optimizations like um, setting a specific trigger word for your runner so that the um, Dbus runner process is not uh, started before it is actually useful because I had like a little plugin that allowed me to mount VeraCrypt volumes and that was only triggered by the word VeraCrypt and 
and because of that optimization, it no longer started a, a process uh, every time I booted into the Plasma session. And it is also now possible to set um, actions only for specific patches. Um, and before, k one would, uh, would always take all of the actions, actions that you have provided and, uh, for your entire DBus runner and add them to every match. And now you can specify that explicitly if you want. And you can also um, support or you can also define your usage help in a runner syntax compatible way in the metadata. And the metadata are just desktop files. And that all of the properties are also documented on the uh, developkde.org page. And because we broke the Kerana ecosystem in the KDE 4 to 5 transition, we don't want to do that again. And because of that, we have like the promise to keep the KF5 runners compatible and working with KF6. But only as long as you don't get a deprecation warning about the desktop file location, because we internally needed to get rid of K service type trader. And, and the new location is like in the data root deer and then Krunner slash dbus plugins. So it's really easy to port that. And the install or the new install location is available since KDE frameworks 572, and that has even hit Debian stable or Debian 11. So there's really no reason not to port to it. And in Plasma 5.21, there was an integration for the uh, Kerana plugins into the KDE store edit. And that supported like custom install scripts or some pre-built packages. And of course, there were proper warnings um, and recommendations um, given in the install dialog. And for Python scripts, it is relatively simple to just manually review uh, the one or two files that are in there. But because we didn't have a standardized um, install procedure, um, we had to rely on the install scripts and open a terminal window for them um, because some scripts required manual interven intervention or adjustments. Um, for example, if there's a yes or no question inside of the install script. And that had worked uh, great and we got many more plugins on the KDE store and it made it also far more discoverable, discoverable for users. Um, but as it is still not great your ex to like have a terminal window open uh, when you want to install something. Um, we Linux nerds probably are perfectly fine with that, but the average user might be a bit confused. And most install scripts um, for Dbus runners are just based on the official template in the Krunner repository which just um, adjusts and copies um, a few files. And the idea is that um, we can specify the files that need to be copied or the information uh, required for files to be generated in a metadata format. And then we can uh, manually generate or copy those files uh, without the need to execute any custom script. And maybe that can be extended with some um, dependency checks or installation checks so that your runner works properly after being installed. And the merge request for that has recently landed. And I will, um, of course, um, make use of it in the official uh, Dbus runner template in the Kerana repository. And in KDE Framework 6, there were quite a lot of changes. And when looking at the Git history, there was lots of code removed and API refactored. There were quite a lot um, KDE 4 leftovers as I mentioned with the uh, run options API that was entirely defunct. And most consumer facing changes were already prepared with deprecation macros, um, but not every change could be um, prepared with them. For example, the namespace was changed from Plasma to Krunner because Krunner is its um, own framework now and no longer a part of Plasma. And that didn't make sense throughout all of the KF5 time. And we have a significant, significantly reduced dependency tree and because in KF5, Krona depended on Plasma frameworks in its public API, which was quite ugly. And 
it now only depends on uh, like k activities internally and k coordinates in its public API, and besides that, only Qt core. And in KF6, there was also the model for MULU imported, and that model is responsible for like sorting the uh, different matches the runners provide, and it also um, like exposes the information about the matches to QML. And with that move, all of the core functionality is now in one place in the KRUNA framework. And that means we are more flexible when doing code changes because we don't have to worry about the different release cycles. Um, but of course, we still need to keep binary compatibility and such. And Kika already uses this unified model and that allowed us to get rid of um, the sorting implementation there. Also, there was a new class created in Kerona, which is just, just called Kerona Action. And that is a very simple data class, which contains like the ID, text, and icon or icon name. Um, because having a queue action was overkill and caused also issues with threading. Um, but the porting can just be done using find and replace. And you can remove the new keyword to instanti instantiate it because it's now not a pointer, but passed by reference. Also, the refactoring of the threading was a large effort. And the previous state was summed up by Kai pretty well, who said, currently, Karina uses mental multi-threading for everything, <laughs> which I found quite funny. And he was referring to the um, abstract runner match method being called in different threads. And Sometimes it was called like by different threads at the same time. If you have a very um, long, or if you have a math match method which takes very long, and the prepare teardown init and reload configuration methods uh, were still done in the main thread. Um, so if you were to do any heavy lifting there, you would still block the main UI. And if you want to do data initialization, initialization without blocking the main thread, it is a pretty big hassle. And in KDE code, we have often used the pattern of like having a mutex so that for the first match method call, you initialize the data, data in there, and then uh, you write it into a variable, and, and then unlock the mutex and reuse it for the rest of the match session and clean it up afterward. But in KF6, the or every runner is moved to its own thread. And the prepare teardown init and reload configuration methods are also called in the runner's thread. And, and that allows for a safe initialization and cleanup of data and makes the code far simpler. And even in frameworks, it is less code because all of the thread weaver um, jobs could be removed. And there's also the possibility for further optimizations like in some runners, um, we query the bookmarks using um, a normal QSQL, uh, SQL Lite connection. And if we type like KDE as, as the first three letters and we type another letter afterward, we could maybe reuse the previous results instead of um, making a new query. Um, yeah, and that is now possible due to the, their um, due to the match method not being called from separate threads at the same time. But I have also some further plans and ideas. Um, but before coming to that, I'd say that Kerana is currently in a pretty good state, and we are utilizing Dbus runners where appropriate, like in Plasma Browser Integration, Quinn, and the K-Activity Manager daemon. Um, but that currently means we have a bit of code duplication and we have this like um, Dbus util setup from Krunner copied in a bunch of different places. And ideally, we would have a small uh, C++ library for that. And maybe it could be even header only, and so that we can deduplicate that code internally in KDE. Also, the sorting still needs improvements, um, because we currently use both the match type and relevance for sorting, which is a bit confusing. And the match type is basically an enum with magic values. And the values don't make um, very much sense anymore because they're like a helper match, no match, or exact match. And um, we don't have like any specific 
uh, usage of a helper match. We only care for the integer value that is assigned to it. And in case um, the match type is different, um, the is different between two matches, the match with the higher match type is preferred. And only if the match type is the same, we consider the relevance of the matches, and that is confusing a lot of people. And it also makes it really hard to like, tweak the order inside of the plugins, because um, you can sometimes by accident rearrange um, the categories with the results that other runners produced. And instead, we want to have separate values, one for like sorting the categories so that the applications may be more important than the software center runner. And then uh, we keep the relevance so that um, runners can tweak the order of their um, own matches. And that would also allow Karina to learn smarter um, what results you prefer because it can both learn like um, what specific applications you most often uh, launch, um, but also um, what runners you, in generally, uh, you generally use. And there was also, or there is also a feature, a long-standing feature request about making the uh, search order configurable in the Plasma Search KCM. And the idea is that you can uh, specify a few favorites and all of those favorites will um, be presented in a fixed order when they produce matches in KRunner. And the order within the category is unchanged um, because that would be like uh, over configuration. And on the right hand side, you can already see a screenshot on how that could look visually. Um, usually, the QML bits are the hardest for me <laughs> when implementing such features. Um, but Marco helped me out with some de details here. And um, you can see that you are able to rearrange the favorites using drag and drop. And finally, I want to end with a big thanks to the community because all of those uh, awesome features and contributions would not have been possible without other members. Um, I've listed a few notable ones like David Edmondson and also Natalie Clarios and Kai Uwe, who was the previous maintainer of Kerona, and also Fujan and Nate Graham, who has been uh, very helpful in reviews and visual feedback. And there's also a buff about Kerona at Tuesday at 9 a.m. in room two. And we plan to discuss uh, some Debus Runner related ideas and also some visual improvements and um, Kai has motivated me uh, to make a buff about it. And I hope to see you there. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Are there questions? This is just a, a general question, but it, o over time we have suggested um, a few UI changes to, mm -hmm. to KRunner, and some of them are implemented, which is really cool. Uh, but along with the work that you're doing with plugins, are you also open to like visual changes to, uh, to do some of that, or, or no, not for now? Well, the framework itself is like not specific to any um, visuals, um, but if you are referring to like the KRunner executable, yeah, I'm open to, for suggestions and discussion, and then uh, it would be re really cool if you would uh, join me at the BOF on Tuesday, because um, they will also discuss um, some issues or some ideas there. Sounds good, thank you. Do you agree that alt space is the correct shortcut for opening KRunner instead of all the other default ones? Uh, I have mapped my meta key to open k <laughs> and I'm so used to that by now. <laughs> and every time I'm on my uh, work Windows PC, I'm wondering why does the menu open up on the bottom left, uh, bottom left, uh, bottom left corner. <laughs> so you need to port k to Windows so you can use it on your work machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, the framework itself um, would build against Windows, but uh, most of the uh, useful plugins in the executable are part of Plasma. Okay. okay, thank you. That concludes the session for today. And tomorrow at 10, we will start again here with the next uh, yeah, talks. And in case you have any questions when trying to implement your own runner, feel free to ask.